colleagues for their words, for sharing of themselves. And thank you, Grandmother Meter, for that beautiful story, which I've heard before, but each time you tell it and share it, it does touch the spirit and what the essence of our relationship is, relationships are all about and how we can learn from our children and how that understanding that our children are closest to spirit and have, have, are not yet tainted by what we impose upon them as adults and society around them. The children are indeed our teachers and we need to listen to them from those that are first born to those are about age of 10. They are our greatest teachers. We're here today to talk about setting a foundation for relationships, setting a foundation for how we can move forward so that we can respect each other and that we can arrive at solutions together for that topic that is very difficult to speak of. It's very difficult because it has a negative connotation and that is one of racism in healthcare. We don't need to talk about the reports, although there are many, many reports already that have outlined and documented the historic relationship with our people and with the governments, as well as with society in general, those who came from Europe, as was shared by our elder uh, knowledge keeper, Augustine, the historical background of those visitors who came to these lands, those visitors who came to exert their power because that is what they understood and that is their upbringing. But in North America, on these lands that we call Turtle Island, our understanding and our relationship is first and foremost, <clears throat> excuse me, with our mother, the earth, our responsibility to care for her. She provides everything for us to be a healthy, well person so that we are able to fulfill our responsibilities that are given to us by our creator, that we have a role in life to play, that we have responsibilities to fulfill. Our second responsibility is our, spirit, is our spiritual responsibility to understand what it is that those gifts are that have been given to us, to understand our role in life, to understand that we have things that we need to do to fulfill in our lifetime so that our children and our grandchildren will not suffer, so that our children and our grandchildren will thrive, so that our mother, the earth, continues to thrive and provide for us. That is, that is the essence of being well, is to, to, to take care of our earth, to take care of each other, to, to build on what has been left for us by our ancestors so that we could have a good life. What's the basis for setting a foundation? If we are to set a foundation, the basis, the first law of a relationship is respect. And respect seems to be where many relationships struggle before they even begin to achieve success. The highest ideal of respect is to give and to share the best of ourselves with, the, with each other in service to a greater good. And the essence of respect is to give. Respect cannot be legislated. It can't be forced on people. It is the essential element of every individual character. And by extension, those whom we have contact with and we enter with, engage with, and speak on behalf of our relationships our personal relationships with, which, which, excuse me, with each other is important. We're not faceless, we're not nameless, and we're not voiceless. We are all here and we will always be here. And we have to acknowledge that. And respect is the basis for the compassion that grandmother Jane Meter spoke of and our understanding, our willingness to learn from each other our willingness to take the best from challenges, to learn the lessons and to move forward in a good way. Many of us have felt the sting of disrespect. It touches us to the core and it impacts us. Respect is lived and it is breathed in all of our relationships and everything we do every day, 
it's necessary for the foundation we speak of. Being well in our understanding begins with spiritual well-being. Spiritual well-being connects us to our language, our ways of knowing and doing, our connection to land, the sacredness of water without which none of us would survive, our connection to family, our extended family, our kinship. Our first learning was to be a good relative, to be honorable, to walk with honor and humility, to be respectful, to be kind, to help and to give. Without spiritual well-being, all other facets of health, our emotional, our mental, our physical well-being will suffer. Health is not only experienced across physical, spiritual, emotional, and, and mental dimensions. It's also experienced over our lifetime, beginning with gesta gestation and inclusive all stages of our lives. That is why we teach our young girls, be careful how you walk and be careful how you talk while you carry your child in your womb. That is the beginning of how they learn to have a relationship with all that is around them. So how do we set that foundation? Join us in our understanding of what well-being means to us. Through our sacred lodges, we have that knowledge. We have our teachers. We have those who not only practice but live with ceremony, who teach us on a daily basis that we begin our day with prayer and thanksgiving. We didn't wake up this morning because our body told us to. We woke up this morning because the creator blessed us with the gift of life to wake up and do the best that we can today for what it is that we've been placed here to do. <laughs> when, when we are guests in another's home, as, Jay, as our elder grandmother meter had spoken of, when we are guests when in another home, in someone else's home, we respect their home. We bring with us gifts of food and water. We offer our gifts and we humble ourselves. Likewise, when we have guests in our homes, we provide the best for them. We give them our bed. We provide the best meal. We give them everything that we have as was taught to us by our grandparents and our parents. We open our home to them. This is the basis of a relationship that we grew up with. And that is the basis that our relationship in Canada started on and was founded on when we welcomed our relatives that came from another country. And that is the relationship that we need to return to. The handshake in our culture is the most important because it accompanies our voice and the words that we speak. It is more powerful than anything written on paper because in our language and in our ways, we do not need to write what it is that we speak of and what it is that we agree to do because our honor is encapsulated in our words, in our action and in that handshake. We are not people of hierarchy. We view and value all human beings as equal. We were created last, therefore, the ant that crawls on the ground is greater than you and I. It is more powerful. Our mother, the earth, with her provisions of sacred water and all that we need to flourish is the most sacred of all. She is in control. She is the one who shows us that she is in control. And yet man and human beings have not yet learned that we are on that precipice of ruining the entire human race. We're not in control. Mother Earth will survive, but the human being will not. The voices of our colleagues and our knowledge keepers share the following. Our, grandpa, our grandparents would share, if you want to know where you want to go, you have to understand where you come from to follow the journey the creator has set for us. That includes everybody that is sharing and listening in. Our colleague Morris Littlewolf stated, 
The greatest illness our people have today is that we have become the greatest imitators of another way of life. The way of life that we are to live was given to us by our, by our creator. That is the sacred way of life. And to imitate another has been to our detriment and has caused the illness that is pervasive in our, amongst our people and amongst yours. The concept of the terms inferior and superior do not exist in our languages and do not reflect our values. We are all equal. As stated by another colleague and another traditional leader, Peter Ochis, our source for our way of life and our laws is the creator. It's not written and it is not dictated. In our understanding as a people to be healthy, it requires a spiritual foundation based on identity and connection to the land. This foundation is tied to living our values, reflected in our spiritual and natural laws, our teachings, and following our sacred duties and responsibilities given to us by the Creator. Our Creator has provided everything for us to live a good life to be healthy and to fulfill our responsibilities. Our doctor is our creator and our faith. Our hospital is the land and the water. Our pharmacy is the earth and all that she provides for us. Our ceremonies, our pipe, our rattle, our drum and our songs were gifted to us for our spiritual, emotional, physical and psychological well-being. As stated by our young people addressing addictions, the only thing they need is love and kindness. How much does it cost to give a hug? How much does it cost to offer a supportive word or a supportive shoulder? The power of prayer is so great as was well spoken to, but this prayer requires us to do the 50% that's needed with action. You are not here just for yourself. You have a purpose. And then what are you going to do to fulfill it? In Wabanug, the resurgence of a people, clearing the path for our survival, voiced and written by our knowledge keepers, there are 25 recommendations and 25 calls to action in Wabanug. I encourage you all to read it. Because in that document, which we do not have time to share today with the 10 minutes given to us, and I'm sure I've passed it, I encourage you to read it, to listen and learn for, for what it is that we are sharing today. So how do we create the spirit of unity? We transcend politics. Politics is not leadership. It's not about parties. It's not about differences. Leadership is about leading with a kind heart and with love for everyone. How do we have a relationship? We have a relationship with our creation, with our mother earth, with ourselves and with others built upon that foundation of understanding where we all come from and understanding that we are one, all a fabric, a part of the fabric of human being are gifted to share our knowledge with all and to respect natural law, that we are all equal and we all have a purpose for the common good for the well-being of this beautiful earth, so that our children, grandchildren, those yet unborn, will have a good life. We share this with you so that we do not need to talk about racism, so that we do not need to talk about all the things that have happened. Those are already in our memories. Those are all already in the fabric of who we are, but we take the best of those challenges and learn from them and move it forward so that we can create a good life for our children and our grandchildren and those yet unborn, because indeed that is all our responsibilities to ensure that they have a good life. Wopidaya mitakewasu.